Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Roman here. This is a continuation of my previous two videos on parts one and two of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Um, if you haven't watched the other two, I would suggest it if you have time, of course. Um, but like I said in those ones, this is my thoughts. My thoughts on some characters, some memorable events in the series, and just it's not an in-depth analysis or a critical review or a deconstruction. Just my thoughts, a fan, a new, new fan, of the series. Like the previous two videos, of course there's going to be spoilers, so don't read before you watch. And I hope you enjoy. Alright, part three, Stardust Crusaders. Now, I know the anime is being shown at the moment in Japan. Um, the new anime, not the OVA from years ago. The new one. And it looks so good. It looks so good. I didn't have the time to watch it, but it looks so good, so good. Straight off the bat, straight up, straight away, we meet Jotaro Kujo. He's in his cell, straight up, Stans. I've been looking forward to Stans since I started reading chapter one, part one. So, Star Platinum, holy crap. Jojo, Star Platinum, catches the bullet. And then we have um, Abdul, or Abdul, depends what um, translation you're reading, um, comes in with Magician's Red. And, you know, I loved it. I loved, I loved the idea of starting the series with a... Starting the series with a... a bang. Character of Jotaro, the new Jojo, part three Jojo. At first, I wasn't, I wasn't as connected with him as I was, say, with Joseph or Jonathan. He was like the rebel without a cause kind of guy, just living out his own dream, chilling in a prison cell. And then I kept reading and I saw a familiar face, a familiar way of talking, a familiar Jojo. Two Jojos for the price of one Jojo. Joseph, Joseph was in it. Joseph was in, is in Stardust Crusaders. The man who shot a bottle cap out of a ripple infused bottle of coke at a policeman's face. He's in it. Needless to say, of course, he's older, but he's in it. And I didn't care. We're continuing this, guys. Jonathan. Joseph. Jotaro. Joseph. What? Joseph. Joseph. Part one, part two. Two Josephs. Josephus. It's just... It's just... It was great. Anyway, so, Hermit Purple. It was alright. We can't have too many, too many amazing stands in, in one series. I'm just kidding, girls, we can. I liked the idea of Hermit Purple, smashing a camera or a television, like, where you're supposed to go, kind of like in Skyrim, you know, the clairvoyance spell, where it shows you your path. That's what it's kind of is, that's what I compare it to. I thought, I thought Hermit Purple was alright. I mean, I wasn't overly impressed. Then we have a schoolboy with red hair, green clothes, Hetherink. Heffer, Hefferlump, Hefferlump, Green? You know, the, uh, he stand? Thought that was pretty cool. Tentacles weaving everywhere. Plenarif. Polnarif. Baggett Man. Favourite character. Favourite character of part three. Might even be my favourite character of part one, two, and three. Hell, even four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I haven't even read. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. It was nine. Silver Chariot. I have a thing for characters with swords. He was like a fencing. He had like a rapier and he was like. I thought that was pretty sweet. Silver Chariot. He was a really cool stand. I really enjoyed him. And when he could, when he, when Plunarif, Baggett, man, took off his, took off, um, Silver Chariot's armor. And he was like, now his speed's twice as, Speeds faster. It was sweet. And he was like leaving a trail of other silver chariots behind him. Like, you know, like you you know when someone's running really fast and it looks like there's multiple of them behind each other. Alright, that might not happen in real life, but like in animes and games and movies and mangas and TV shows, that kind of thing. That's what it was. Ooh, yes. I thought that was cool. The idea of journeying to Egypt to destroy Dio. Alright. Now, I mentioned in part one, okay, so if you've read the series, you know that 
Jonathan's body from part one is now the body of Dio. His head, it's just Dio's head on Jonathan's body. And that's one thing I had a grab with. I was thinking, how are you able to get Jonathan's body when the boat sunk to the water? With you in it? No. You got put back in your casket, which I thought Jonathan's wife was in after the boat went off with the baby. Just, so what, two caskets with the names Dio exist in the same universes? Two? I thought only one thing can exist in one space at one time. You can't have multiple. Apparently you can. Anyway, the, the group, the Bagot Man, Redhead Schoolboy, Joseph, Chotaro, and Abdul journeying to Egypt to destroy Dio once and for all. I really like the story. And when, throughout the journey, they introduced new stands, I was like... It's a great, it's a great, great idea. Enemy characters with abilities like them. I mean, of course it was going to come in. The stands are awesome. My favourite enemy stands were Death 13, the Freddy Krueger style way of destroying his victims. I like the Hanged Man. Um, the stand of Jay Gill with his almost um, Assassin's Creed like Hidden Blade Emperor. Um, we're welded by. Welded? 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 By Whole Horse with his like. like the gun and he can control the bullet. Bullets also his stand. It's pretty cool. Thoth? Toth? Thoth? Thoth? Oingo's um, book that could predict the future, but it doesn't tell you which future, kind of, you know what I'm saying. You've read it. And the Darby's. Both of them, their stands, Atum and Osiris. I just like the Darbys in general. I'm sorry if that's not how you pronounce the name. Darby. I really like them. I like the characters. How he's like the ultimate games wizard and he's like the ultimate video games wizard. Anyway, and Anubis. The sword, Anubis being a sword. And that that is the stand that makes anyone evil. Genius. And when Planarif picked it up, Don't do that. Don't do that. A memorable moment for me was when Planarif and Vanilla Ice were battling and Planarif almost died by Cream, Vanilla Ice's stand. It brought a tear to my eye before I went to the next page. I honestly thought he died. I didn't want it to be true, but <sighs> I'm glad it wasn't. Because Iggy, the silly dog, saved Planarif's ass from Vanilla Ice. And I was so relieved. It was like, oh. That was good. Let's go on to Dio. I loved his costume so much. I loved throughout the whole series until the few chapters in of Dio's world near the right, right at the very end. He was in black. Just coated in black. Which I think he's classified as called or is it maybe name, a fair name Shadow Dio? Where he's just like <laughs> I know there's there's a few there's a few statues of um Shadow Dio. Anyway, his costume, I love his costume. And how the drawing style has evolved once more, and Dio no longer looks like a lame bag of lemons with a crappy blonde wig on. It looks cool. Alright, in the battle in Cairo, Cairo, I believe, the final battle with Njotaro and Dio. <sighs> Give it up because that was a fucking great battle. I loved it. I've seen cosplays, Dio cosplays of people um, with this sign, like a uh, road sign, a blue road sign. And I was like, so Dio's gonna have to use this somewhere in the battle. And he did. He was gonna chop Jotaro's head off. Okay, props to all the cosplayers out there, right? You're fantastic. And then Planarif came in and absolutely saved Jotaro, alright? With the silver chariot back. And it was sweet. He's back. Planarif is back. Thank you, beast Planarif. The world. The world. So good. So good. I absolutely love the world. He was my favourite sand. Sorry, Silver Chariot. Sorry, Atom. Sorry, Cyrus. Sorry, Anubis. He was the best. Stopping time and moving at like speeds of Star Platinum. It was great. 
the or 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 and muda 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 punching battle with um Star Platinum and the world was so good. It was just awesome. When uh, Dio got the steamroller, whatever it was, and dropped it on Jotaro and started muttering away, smashing him under, I was like, no Jotaro, you can't. But at the same time, I was like, Dio, you're so awesome. And then, of course, we all know Jotaro figured out he could stop time with Star Platinum. And Dio was like, holy shit. That was great. I didn't expect it. I'm t straight up, I did not expect Star Platinum to be able to stop time. Now, I don't know if Dio is really dead because in the Wikipedia he appears in part six or five or whatever. So I'm not sure what the go is with that, but I hope he comes back. I like it, but I hate him. But I like him. He's a cool character. And when Joseph at the end got Dio's blood into him and he pretended to be Dio, I was like, are you serious? There are like five pages left of part three and Dio's back. But when he said he was kidding, I was like, oh, whew. I was just like, fuck you, Joseph. I want my Dio. All up. When I was reading the start, when I was in the middle, I still liked part one more than part three. But at the end, that hype battle with Jotaro and Dio, just absolutely fantastic. That pushed it straight up, straight up the line for me. Part three is so good. And I was talking to my friend again, and he was, I was like, I don't think anything can get better than part three. And he goes, part four is just as good. And I'm like, I'll see you guys later. I'll see you later. I've got, I've got to go read. School, school can wait. I have to go read like a million chapters of this book so I can feel alive. <sighs> I am enjoying Jojo's Bizarre Adventure so much and I can't believe I didn't read it sooner. Mainly because of the length. It's been going on for what? Forty-four years? Forty-something years? I was like, I can't, I can't get into something that's so old. I'm gonna be spoiled so much on Pablo, Fena, cosplays. But it doesn't matter. Because it's amazing. And even that little bit getting spoiled, there is so much other stuff that doesn't even matter. Yeah? Just doesn't even matter. So like I said before, that was just my thoughts on it. Thank you so much for watching. So if you guys had a stand, what would you call it? I would call mine Purple Rain, and it would have the ability, when another stand comes in close proximity to it, this like, like kind of acid rain will fall, and it will start to destroy the stand. But of course, if it comes in contact with another stand physically, it stands no chance. So, my question to you guys is, what would you call your stand and what would its ability be? Leave it in the comments below, and thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to subscribe, um, if you like the video, but, you know, you don't have to. Alright guys, once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys soon with another video.